I'm JD the Media Jack, and this is another episode of The Flip Side, a podcast that used to be a radio show going strong. I know it's been a while since I've uploaded a new video, but here we are. We have a great couple of interviews coming your way, but first, a little bit of business. The podcast is now available yet again on different podcast sites. You can download it either on Spotify or on Anchor, even Google and Apple, formerly known as iTunes, and other locations. So wherever you download your audio podcasts, Chances are the flip side is there. All you have to do is search for the Media Jack. Now, this episode. First interview up is Cornelius, the drummer from a German funeral doom metal band. They've been around since 2004 and just recently released a brand new live album called Live Prey. This is Cornelius from Ahab on the flip side. First of all, thank you so much for taking the time today to uh, have a conversation with me. Um, we'll start well, off with... Thank, th thank you for the interest. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's my pleasure. We'll start off with uh, your background. You're the drummer for Ahab. When did you start drumming? Yeah, it's actually a topic I really don't appreciate so much these days because it uh, makes me aware of my age. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I started, uh... <laughs> uh, I, I started yeah, uh, 22 years ago at the age of 16. Really? Mm -hmm. Was drumming always something that you wanted to get into at a young age? Uh, yeah, always, always. I was always fascinated by drumming. My first instrument I learned was uh, the violin cello. I started with uh, six years because yeah, my, my parents are classical musicians and uh, yeah, they liked me to play a classical instrument for sure. But drums were always uh, yeah, something fascinating for me. And uh, at the age of 16, finally it happened and uh, yeah. I haven't stopped so far. So you come from a musical family, and mm -hmm. uh, it, it, far be it from your family uh, wanting you to go a more classical route, you decided to break out onto your own, get into some drumming as well. You kind of have to forge your own way and go forward in your own interests and, uh, and desires, right? Yeah, ab absolutely. Yeah. It's You know, it's, if, it's about, if it's about music, music in the first place is... Uh, yeah, like uh, like transcribing your feelings and stuff. And uh, if you act against your feelings, you do something you're not absolutely into. What type of art or music would that be? <laughs> probably yeah, the exactly. stuff. Probably the stuff you listen to on the radio, right? But uh, soulless music. So. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you become a part of Ahab? We are pretty much uh, from the same area, and we have uh, met. Like, yes, you always do when you're young. You meet, meet on concerts, you see the other guy's band play, then they see your band play. And uh, I remember to have met Daniel on an open air festival. I played with my death metal band back in the days, and he showed me the demo of I Have. And I was super impressed because I've never listened to anything like that before. I knew Doom for sure, like, yeah, the classical stuff like uh, Black Sabbath or. Yeah, the British stuff like My Dying Bride, but I've never listened to Funeral Doom. Wow, what the fuck is that? And it was a super hot summer, and I, I, I remember sitting in the living room and um, and having having the yeah having the first four track demo on and having like forty degrees in the living room and was like, oh, dude, this is actually <laughs> totally totally the music like being caught on the sea in a total uh, no wind at all and mm. nothing. And the super heat, and I was, I was from the from the very first second on, I was absolutely into that. Yeah, then we we met, and we met again for not not Ahab reasons, if I remember correctly. But then Danielle asked me, they wanted to have a real drummer. Yeah, they, mm. and then yeah, then they asked me, and we met some, and then and at one of those meetings, Danielle asked me, what about? recording our first album with real drums you know we have a drum computer on it and it should be uh going to press in two weeks but uh what about next weekend showing up and record the album oh uh, uh, yes let's do that and um they wanted the I, genuine thing not just a drum machine they wanted the real yeah. drum set there yeah, yeah, they yeah. better they better should have picked the drum machine because I still am. <laughs> it's my opinion. My my drumming on that first album is absolutely not not, not your favorite. Absolutely not my favorite. No, and the <laughs> the best thing I recorded that in 
in one and a half days. And in the end of, of, of the second day, we went to a party and there we met Christian, the guitar, other guitar player. Right. And, and, and when we told him we recorded, we re-recorded like kind of re-recorded drums for that album, he was so super fucking pissed about that. <laughs> he was extremely annoyed. He was, he, he, he I think, <laughs> up to the up to the current day he's not okay with that <laughs> <laughs> that first album is the call of the wretched sea yeah yeah it is yeah uh so okay so you move forward from uh going in and removing the uh the drum machine from the tracks of that album then you jump in fair enough you're not exactly happy about it but you always are your own worst critic when it comes to your own art right yeah, it has to, yeah. It has to be. that's the only thing that works to become a better musician. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So then you move forward from there and you release your next album. I think it was only a couple of years later. What was it like being a part of the creative process? Uh, for... It was actually, it was super astonishing. It was absolutely perfect because uh, it, I felt that Daniel and me can work together very, very very well it it was it was like yeah a supernatural process mm. like we we in his place we recorded demos for all the songs for divinity of oceans this is the i think this is the only i'm, I'm not sure here but i think this is the only record where christian hasn't has not written a single riff so divinity is daniel's okay it's always daniel's stuff yeah but uh, we 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 did that together and it was it was yeah it was heavenly. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I had found an, a new very intimate partner for uh, for becoming creative. Absolutely, well, this was this was super great times back then. I, mm -hmm. I enjoyed it to the fullest. <laughs> so, how much do you guys work together? Because you have uh, yourself in on drums, Stefan bass, Christian guitar, and then of course Daniel with the lead. So, how much of the creative uh, control? goes on throughout the four of you ah, it's 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 it turns out to be very very different between mm -hmm. uh the albums so uh, uh divinity of oceans was like i just told you then um the giant was a little bit more like doing it in the in the rehearsal space as the mm -hmm. four of us we are then the boats of the glen carrick was a total teamwork thing with a uh, endless discussions and things but it uh but it was uh, only we only brought ideas to the rehearsal space and then composed together yeah and the upcoming album we're on composing right now it's a little bit more like the giant we have spent a lot of time already together in the rehearsal space but it turns out that uh, this time again there will be a few songs which will be written at home by daniel and mm -hmm. then <laughs> then be slaughtered in the rehearsal space by the <laughs> by the by the rest of us and then uh, yeah but yeah it tends it tends to vary all the time mm -hmm. the giant the album that you guys were recorded and released back in 2012 there is a strong link uh to edgar Allan poe's novel in there that he wrote in 1838 do you guys pull a lot of inspiration from uh poets and artists of the past <clears throat> Yeah, this is this is I guess this is what Ahab is about. Like <laughs> nothing's happening music wise as long as we didn't as as we don't we don't have uh, the the groundwork, you know? Mm. Uh the story behind it. So as the same like this, we've been fogging around with ideas and stuff for, for like oh god, yeah, I have to say years right now. And then finally Christian decided to take the book we're <laughs> yeah, we have been taken right now, and um, finally, then riffs popped up and more more clear song structures and stuff. So yeah, um, literature is always first, mm -hmm. and then and then music. The last album uh, that you guys have listed right now is uh, from 2015, "The Boats of Glen Carrick," and now we are all in this world pandemic situation where everything has come to a grinding halt but yet you guys have still released a live album called live prey what was the process of getting that all together with everything that's going on was this something that was already in the can before or is this something because of covid 
Uh, no, 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 not at all. Not at all. Absolutely not. It's more like like an incidental thing. Okay. <laughs> you know, I told you uh, before in the beginning of the interview that I'm absolutely not satisfied with uh, what I did on Call of the Red Sea, my drumming and stuff. And I was I was always thinking about <laughs> I want to do something with those songs because I like the songs and everything. It's cool, but uh, you know you can't re-record an album because then you will destroy the initial uh, atmosphere and feeling mm-hmm. and everything. So, uh, so this was was off the table before it got on. <laughs> um, nice. And then after we played that show here in the city where I live in Jena on the Death Row Festival, uh, some weeks or even months after the show, the sound guy, the local sound guy, who's a very very good engineer, uh, so this is this is something very important. <laughs> okay. Um, he, he approached me like, dude, by the way, I recorded your show. <laughs> you want to have it? <laughs> you want to have it? Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> why, why not? Just bring me a USB device. So, and then it took some long, long weeks and more months that I kept my mind together. Ah, tonight, the show we are going, Uber is mixing. So, this time, I won't forget this fucking stick. So it took a very a bit, b- b- very long time to make those files to make that they made their way uh, mm-hmm. to my computer, mm-hmm. um, and then when I listened to it, I was like like uh, like uh, <laughs> not, not gnawing gnawing my, my 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 nails because of my fingernails because I was like, oh fuck if there's uh, uh, because it's only a stereo track you know I didn't have right. like kick drum snare drum anything I just got one stereo track with everything on it that's it. Right. And uh, I was like, oh, fuck, if there's a mistake on it, like a super stupid fuck up, like uh, somebody playing the total wrong part or totally wrong notes, we absolutely, right. it's, 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 it's nothing worse. Right. And then when I went through it, it was like, yeah, no, no, no severe fuck ups on it. Okay, yeah. guys, what <laughs> do you think about releasing a live album? Because then I get what I always wanted, like, proper drums on Call of the Wretched Sea mm. and um, it seems we don't have our album our next album ready so far so Napalm Record gets something they can release they didn't ask for but uh, you know it's always nice if you take a very very long time like we did this time it's five years now mm. um, to give the label something they can do and um, yeah finally <laughs> when everybody mm. listened to it so okay let's do that and then it took me ages to uh, do something with the raw file I got like make okay. it sound like worth being released like 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 you know like massive and stuff I learned right, a right. Lot. I learned I learned a ton about uh, equalizing stuff in in those yeah in this time and mm. yeah now here we are and I'm yeah I'm pretty happy that it worked <laughs> because uh, yeah even for my ears it did work <laughs> Yeah. Who, who would have thought that when you were out there uh, performing at these incredible concerts and festivals with all the fans there, you were actually, in fact, creating one of the best albums that you can actually sit back, relax, and surprise yourself with how good it came out. And the fact that there was barely any, if if, if at all, no fuck-ups whatsoever. In the very, very first song, the first time Christian enters the melody, he's... <laughs> so yeah, but but I think this is this is kind of the only thing in the whole mm. show that's not that's a little bit like you know like dirty and yeah not so mm. accurate. But in the end, who cares? It's a live album, and the rest of it, everything is cool on it. So who cares about a you know like a a rough tone? So. Mm. <laughs> when when you were listening back to all those cuts from the live album before it was actually an album, were you able to place yourself back and go like, I remember how I was feeling, or I remember the performance of this specific day? Did, did anything stick out of all those tracks? Uh, it's uh, the outstanding things that still are in your mind is like the things you remember. Oh fuck my snare is wandering from left to right and then from oh. right to left because the because the stage is very shaky and stuff mm. like that. I had I had really had to care that my drum set doesn't fall off the riser. <laughs> no, this 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 was a thing so I was super concentrated not to to hit anything wrong. Mm-hmm. Um uh but um no it was a uh, 
no, it, it was, yeah, for sure. It was, it was a cool show, but there was nothing super outstanding. I mm. think the best about this was that nobody told us that we were being recorded. So we just it's played a show as we it's always It's probably do. for the best that they didn't tell you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, we, we just played, we just played a, a regular Ahab show. And uh, it turned out that uh, probably a regular Ahab show is not the worst thing to attend. <laughs> I can, I can, I can, I can, I can prove now. <laughs> I have proof. <laughs> so, would you call um, the live prey uh, your favorite album, or would you call one of your studio albums your favorite album so far that you've been a part of? It's it's clearly it's clearly uh, boats of the Glen Carrick. It's the best really? songs, the best compositions, the best the best mixture of styles, the best oh, by far the best production. I haven't. That's that's the funny thing. I'm a very good, you know, the the producer, the guy who recorded us and mixed everything. Um, the last two albums, uh, mm -hmm. Jens, he's a very good friend of mine, and I was so glad when I heard the, the final product because I have I. I, I compared a lot of good albums I like uh, very much with the production of the boat of the Glen Carrick and uh, the boat of the Glen Carrick wins. It's the best production I have heard so far in Doom. I haven't the, heard anything better for my ears. The production was by Sebastian? No, no, no. Jens. His, his name is Jens. Jens, sorry. Jens, my... Jens Seifert. He, he's the... Jens Seifert, yeah, he recorded everything and he mixed us and he mastered us and everything. And he, yeah, he's a very, very, he's very close to me. And I'm so glad to, to be able to tell him, dude, this is your absolute masterpiece. You have made the best Doom production in the world so far, <laughs> For my, in my opinion. Awesome. What are the future plans? Uh, barring the world not shitting itself at this point in time and things getting better, uh, what the, are the future plans? Yeah, we just today made it absolutely clear that we're not going to play any show this year anymore. Okay. Everything will be postponed, but uh, it was like, but guys, don't you dare to plan anything on those dates. We are going to meet and write the fucking album. So, <laughs> yeah. Perfect. The, the, the plan is to finish the album and then go to the studio. This is the plans for this year. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, that's it. Mm. But the last thing I wanted to touch on was the fact that Ahab actually has a partnership with uh, certain companies when it comes to uh, band supplies and gear and whatnot, including you have a partnership with a company that supplies you with drumsticks. Am I wrong? Uh, no, no, no. No, I have. It's uh, it's not like a full endorsement I'm because I'm not Dave Lombardo, obviously. But, uh, okay. yeah, and I, I have. And they are, yeah, they're still the best I've ever played. It's called Ice Sticks, and they're located somewhere in the far northeast of uh, Germany. And that's that's actually where you are right now. You are living in Sticks. They're, yeah, they're beautiful. Ice, yeah, it's Ice Sticks, yeah. No, it's, 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 it's a little, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's still four hours drive from me or five hours drive. You know, it's okay. nothing like Canadian distances, I know. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, no, Canada's pretty spread out too. I mean, <laughs> I got I to drive two hours to the closest um, uh, movie theater at this point in time. So, no, there's still a drive. No, yeah. this is this is absolutely the opposite. We are such a small country. <laughs> it's yeah. yeah, oh no, fair enough. What would you have to say to uh, your Ahab fans right now? Please, people, take care of yourselves. Be reasonable. Listen to virologists, not to politicians, and not to uh, the asshole living next door or whatever. Listen to virologists. Be reasonable. Wait until this is over. Hope for the vaccine, and then we hopefully meet again. But yeah, uh, don't kill yourself and others. This is unfortunately the only thing I can tell you right now. That's beautiful. That is perfect, man. Thank you so much for joining me, dude. Yeah, th again, thank you for your interest. I'm always, uh, I always feel honored in, uh, yeah, see meeting people being interested in my stuff. <laughs> if you want to know more about Ahab, links are in the description down below. Up next is Britney Slays, the lead vocalist for the Canadian power metal band Unleash the Archers. They just released a brand new album not a few weeks ago called Abyss. As well, brand new music videos available on YouTube. This is Britney Slays from Unleash the Archers. On the flip side, can you tell me how Unleash the Archers came to be? 
was back in university. Scott and I were both attending UVic, mm -hmm. and he was playing in a band when we started dating, and I used to love going to the shows, and I just loved the whole heavy metal scene in, in Victoria, and when, the, when their band broke up, we decided to start Unleash the Archers together, and then found some other members using um, this online website called Live Vic, where you would basically just post if you were looking for musicians or if you were, you know, a musician looking for a new project and it was just a really cool kind of platform. Mm -hmm. So found everybody on there and uh, kind of, I guess, the rest is history. Now, did you always have a history in, in singing and was your interest always in heavy metal? Uh, yeah, I've been singing for, you know, well, ever since I can remember. When I was younger, yes, I discovered heavy metal and I absolutely loved it, but there wasn't really very many opportunities to sing heavy metal, so I mostly was trained in classical and musical theater all through my younger years. And then when I got older and got out of high school and all that wonderful peer pressure to listen to pop music and whatever's cool, I went back to my heavy metal roots and... Um, and then that's why I, you know, decided to start a heavy metal band because I just wanted to see if I could do it, really. <laughs> gotcha. What inspired the name Unleash the Archers? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Nothing! Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was a horrible time trying to pick a, a band name. Everything that we thought of was either taken or not all of us could agree that we liked it. Mm. So um, it, was, it was a long time. It was a lot of back and forth. And uh, finally... We had um, someone that wanted to book a show with us, and and so it was like, okay, need to come up with a band name so that we could make a poster. So we sat there one night at Jam, and we just refused to leave until we picked one. And I think it was, you know, after probably about three hours, someone said, "How about release the archers?" And we were like, ah, "That's not quite right. Maybe if we." Make it unleash the archers, and then they, it was like the one that not everyone hated. So that's <laughs> the one, the one we went with. So Britney Slays and the heavy metal band was out of the question then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, definitely not yeah. that kind of band. Did you always have this sort of lore? in mind when you started producing your albums because i've noticed that one of your most uh, recent releases soulbound there's a story behind it and you even addressed it in a youtube video about all these uh, back and forth and conversation of what does this mean what does that mean do you always have some sort of story behind any album or is it just a through line through all your music I mean, it's not like Coheed and Cambria kind of a thing where from the very beginning they had these two characters and they always sing about them and that's just what their band is all about. Right. At the beginning, I uh, would just write sort of like each song as a story. And so Hold the Devastation, which was our first record, was really just a collection of stories. And I could tell you the background for every one of those songs and what it's about and, and what's going on and, um, you know, what inspired it and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, then on the second album, I really wanted to try writing a concept record. And, you know, it was a first first go at it, so we didn't do a very good job. That <laughs> but, was uh, uh, Demons of the Astral Waste? Yes, yeah. But, I mean, it's still there, and I just loved it. And so uh, we've been writing concept records ever since. But Apex and Abyss were all the same story. And so when we... Time Stand Still was a little bit of a collection of you know, three different songwriters, basically, because Brayden left in the middle of writing that album, and Andrew joined. So it was kind of a little bit of Brayden, a little bit of Andrew, so it wasn't quite um, right. Mm. But then when we started writing for Apex, I was like, all right, you guys, we're doing a full-on concept record. I was like, it's going to be two albums. Here's the story. Write all your riffs around this. And uh, the boys were like, okay, sure. And that was just kind of, because I just love concept records mm. myself personally. And, and it's a really fun way to write music. And I got a lot of ideas going on in this brain of mine. So I figured <laughs> we'd give it, a, give it a shot. Do I detect, and I, I, this is a bit of a loaded question, but do I detect a hint of uh, myth and magic and and D and D because I did notice in one of your uh, response videos there is a uh, collection of books behind you. One of them is the fifth edition of Dungeons and Dragons. Yes, I mean I was never a big D and D'er, I, uh, and I always thought it was really cool, but I never 
you know, had any friends back in the day that would play it. Mm. And then I now now when I would love to play it, I don't have the time. So yeah. um, I've always I've always been interested in it, and I think it's really cool. But it's not really like what inspired the story at all because I didn't have any familiarity with it until the story was written. And so many people came to me and were like, "Your music is perfect for D and D." And I was like, "Really? Okay, cool." And I just kind of started, you know, getting into it more and more. But um, it's mostly just like fantasy in general, which I think inspires D and D and D and D is inspired by fantasy you know mm. what i mean it's mm-hmm. like lord of the rings and all those stories are all kind of part and parcel to one another and chicken or the egg kind of thing going on here so it's really just kind of been like all of my science fiction and fantasy influences all have a little bit of a say in kind of where my brain goes when i write stories so it, it wasn't like specifically D D, but you know obviously it's probably in there i just didn't know that it, that's what inspired lord of the rings or you know what i mean (laughs) yeah yeah no i get it it's like a an underlying inspiration that just kind of bubbles Mm -hmm. to the surface yeah Mm -hmm. what's it like for you and your uh your crew to get the reaction that you've been getting from your fans when they they hypothesize and they try to figure it out what's it like Mm -hmm. to see that reaction i love it i think it's great um you know i as tempted i mean i'm gonna be doing a track by track set of videos just like I did for Apex on the Napalm Records channel and it will explain the story piece by piece but I encourage our fans to create their own story and their own narrative and whatever the song means to them is what it means Um, I'm not the kind of person that is like oh no no this is canon and this is how it works and that's impossible and that's not you know I'm not going to get in there and clarify on people's comments about this stuff because it's the same thing for me when I read. I want to create my own kind of world. And as much as I do love hard world building, like Lord of the Rings, where everything is kind of set and you know exactly how the whole world works, it's also fun to interpret it on your own as well. And so I kind of, I love reading them and I'm like laughing and <laughs> kind of like, oh, that's an interesting take on things or whatever. And it's, yeah, it's really entertaining. I love it. I think it's great. What's the uh, chemistry like with you and the rest of Unleash the Archers? It's great. We're our best friends, and Scott's my partner, so we, you know, we're we're really good at working together. And I, I've known Grant and Andrew for over a decade now, and we've played in bands that toured together for years before they were actually in Unleash the Archers. And they're just like, I don't even know. I don't even have to think mm. about the other. We all know what who's going to be down with what and you know you know what i mean like it's just we're all on board all the time mm. and um and it's a lot of fun with those guys and yeah i don't know it's just kind of like you know family in your in one of the most recent videos again i'm referring back to youtube you did uh, a behind the scenes uh the napalm next door i believe was the series you mentioned that you know this is your studio this is the equipment that we used but uh it's, it's sometimes it's packed up and sometimes it's it's on the road with us but with covid happening it's kind of staying here right now how how badly or how much has the covid 19 situation the pandemic affected you and your group well, I think we might have been hit a little bit harder than others because we were on tour when the whole thing happened and we had about 10 more shows to go and we were quite a few, many thousands of dollars in debt at the time and we needed those shows in order to to pay off everything that we had spent on buses and flights and merch and all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. So we, um, we woke up in Minneapolis and our tour manager basically was like, well, guys, I got bad news. The pandemic is here and it's... It's now, and we can't play the show tonight, and all the rest of the shows are canceled, and we got to get a flight home. And we were just kind of like, what? Like, not the day before, I had been posting on Instagram Mm -hmm. saying, uh, you know, everything's fine. And so, uh, yeah, it was really quite, you know, upsetting and heartbreaking. And so we all hopped on a plane, and by the time we got home, we were just kind of like, wait, what? Like, what? Mm -hmm. Why Why are we at home right now? And um, had to, you know, have put a call out for aid. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And all of our fans bought all the merch and everything that we had. We, you know, we were supposed to sell at the shows. They just bought it off of our web store. They really, really helped us out there and um, helped us pay off everything that we owed. And, um, and then our album release got pushed back. 
because Napalm didn't, you know, know what was going on and all of the printing shops were closed. No one was printing CDs or vinyl or anything like that. And so we were just kind of like, geez. And, um, and then all the festivals that we had booked for the summer got slowly canceled one by one. A little bit of a domino effect there. And it was just kind of like, no, no, everything's going to be okay, right? We're going to be able to play Vakken. <laughs> everything's going to be fine. And then just one after the other. And so it was kind of a dark place for a while there. But um, then it was like Napalm was like, okay, we've figured out the release date. You know, let's get going. Mm. And it just kind of pulled us out of our slump. And we continued on. No, Abyss was officially released just a couple of days ago, was it not? Yep, August 21st. Yeah. Can, can I ask you the thought process behind the, the song and the music video for Faster Than Light? <laughs> Because, you know, doing a little bit of research, I've, I've been a fan of you for a while, but doing a little bit of research and then seeing all this incredible work, including the music video and the song that was inspired by Mad Max and the Thunderdome. And then you get the For You on a track in short shorts <laughs> being gunned down one by one. Uh, have you ever read The Long Walk by Stephen King? Oh, Yeah. Yeah, so that was kind of the inspiration. We um, we knew we wanted to race each other. We wanted this one to be a lighthearted one. We're like, okay, it's coming out after the album. We can be idiots in this video because we're not super serious. We don't take ourselves seriously at all. We're not like trying to be the icons of heavy metal. You know, like we just don't care. It's about having fun. And the music, we play music to have fun. We're not trying to impress anybody. So we're just like, okay, we're going to race each other, obviously. <laughs> uh, who is faster than light? And then um, our director was just like, ooh, I got a good one. And he <laughs> tells us about this book. <laughs> and he's like, so whoever slows down dies. And we're just like, yup, <laughs> that's oh, wow. what we're doing. And um, and so we, you know, we went to work running around a track. And it was a lot of fun. I just, oh my God, when I first got it back from him the first um the first edit i just laughed the whole time and like like crying i'm laughing so hard and my face hurts i'm laughing so hard because we're just being total dummies up there and i think it's <laughs> i just think it's the greatest thing on the planet it's 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 definitely a kick in the pants watching that video <laughs> <laughs> so many people are like i mean great song but what are you doing <laughs> it's like, it's like Really? Come on. Yeah. You know, we can't, not every video can be soul bound where yeah. we're super serious and spending $10,000 on a rain rig. Like, no, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize that your uh, behind the scenes video explained the fact that real rain doesn't really show up on camera. And so mm -hmm. you have to use the Hollywood effects, as it were. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Now, speaking of having fun, um, I don't know if it's a, a an unknown secret or a uh, a poorly kept secret, but uh, Unleash the Archers, and I believe each one of you have a Twitch channel. Yeah, everyone except Scott. Okay. He's um he's not a big Twitcher, but uh, he like he prefers to play video games by himself on the couch. <laughs> Fair enough. Don't judge me. Um, <laughs> exactly. I don't know what it is. I don't know. It's uh, it, you know to each their own. But yeah, yeah we all have. We all kind of got into it after COVID. Mm. It was like, okay, tour's over. What do we do? And uh, Andrew jumped on the on the boat first. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this is so much fun. Like I love watching Andy stream. So I was like, I'm gonna make my own Twitch too. And uh, and then I started just video like gaming. I don't write music like he does. He's a bloody prodigy so gotcha. um i just play video games and it's a really great way to hang out with fans and you know we can't do it on the road can't talk to everyone after the show hang out drink beers whatever which is what we love to do mm -hmm. so this is kind of our our hanging out after the show kind of you know filler so it's a lot of fun i love twitch it really got me through the you know those first few i guess it probably a month or so uh when we weren't we had to quarantine because we were traveling. It really, it, yeah, it's just it's such a cool platform and so many great creators on there. And you can choose what you want to watch and no commercials. Well, there are now, stupid Twitch. But, uh, <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just it's a really fun place to hang out. Yeah. The community. Uh, what do you prefer to play? Oh, a little bit of everything. I'm, I, I, I like open worlds, but not too open. Because I definitely need a linear path to follow, or otherwise I'll just be like 
off in the middle of nowhere collecting shit in the the whole storyline will just wallow and die and I'll forget <laughs> forget the whole point of the game in the first place. Right. So mostly like first person shooter or third person and uh, action, horror, whatever, mm-hmm. science fiction, whatever you got, I'll I'll play it. I like um I like the kind of fun storytelling kind of things. I'm not I like I love Call of Duty, but I'm just not good enough at it. I just <laughs> You don't have to be good at a game to play it. Destroyed? No. Yeah, yeah. In Call of Duty, you do. If you don't know that map, <laughs> man, it's just like respawn, die, respawn, die, respawn, die, respawn, run, 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 die. <laughs> How are you doing back there? I have a knife. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You... This is like I haven't been able to walk five steps the entire game. I'm out. I'm out of here. With everything starting to hopefully calm down with COVID nineteen, and also uh, you having the album released just a few days ago. Is there anything that your fans can look forward to in the near future from you guys? Oh, well, probably just the Twitch yeah. stuff because we had a um, we live streamed our album release show on Saturday. We played a 90 minute set from the Rickshaw Theater down here in Vancouver mm-hmm. and uh, it was a really good time, really fun, but it was just kind of a one time thing. So I mean, we're talking about maybe cutting it up a bit, posting some of the songs up on YouTube so people can enjoy it later, those that missed out, that kind of thing. But uh, for the most part, we're just going to, we're not going to do anything until 2021. We've we've kind of given ourselves the fall to wait and see what happens, mm-hmm. see if things kind of recover in places. We've got bo- dates booked, but um, we're just, we don't want to announce them and then just have to cancel them, right? So no, we're waiting waiting and seeing basically but uh hopefully hang on twitch hopefully i'll get some time to finish the graphic novels for the albums that i have started here and um maybe get those out for everyone in the new year awesome one more question before i let you go what is the one concert or festival you have your eyes on like this is the goal i want to make it back to this and if we can make it back to this then it's a sure sign that everything is going to move forward and everything is going to be okay what's the one concert or festival you look forward to the most to return to well we this year was supposed to be the first year we play Vakken. oh so, yeah really would love to get reconfirmed for that and it's the only one that hasn't but they're the biggest one as well so they have got a lot that they need to work out and that kind of thing before um, they announce, and normally they don't even announce until, you know, September. Usually the summer is when they kind of start booking everybody. So, Vakken, I guess, would be the one. As soon as that one gets confirmed, I know all is right with the world. <laughs> okay, let's end on a high note here. Where can people support you? Where can people find your merch? And what is your Twitch channel? Twitch.tv forward slash Brittany Slays UTA, and that's Slays with an E S. And then Andrew is twitch.tv forward slash Andrew Kingsley UTA. And Grant is, I think, just forward slash Grant Truesdell. So that's nice. And then Unleash the Archers is on there as well. Probably do some Zoom chats or something with everybody every once in a while here. Cool. And then, um, yeah, Indie Merch Store is where all of our merch is. So you can grab some exclusive stuff from there. NapalmRecords.com NapalmRecordsAmerica.com Both of them have exclusive merch as well mm. for us. Yeah, I mean, that's probably the best place. Uh, we've got a Discord as well. If anyone likes hanging out on Discord, you can find that linked to that on our Twitch channel. Um, those, those are probably the best places where we're the most active, for sure. I mean, we're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as well, but uh, not as active on there as we used to be. And Bands in Town. I definitely recommend following us on Bands in Town because that's where we post all of our tour dates. And as soon as things get announced... They'll go up there. You get an actual email notification. It's so cool. (laughs) Technology is a wonderful thing. Yeah, it really is. (laughs) 